Welcome to the study of projectile motion. In this video, we're going to be talking about both the projectile fired horizontally and the projectile fired at an angle. The most commonly tested concept is the projectile fired horizontally. Um, so we're going to start with that. And we're going to start with that by looking at this quick video on the relationship between a projectile fired horizontally and an object that is dropped straight down at the same time. What you got there? This is a good one. Picture two bullets, each exactly the same distance from the ground, each released at the exact same second, except one bullet is dropped to the ground, the other is fired from a gun. The classic physics thought experiment states that both bullets will hit the ground at the same time. Based on what theory? Based on the theory that the bullet that's fired from the gun has no wings on it, no lift. Thus, gravity has the same effect on it as it does on the drop bullet, and thus, they hit the ground simultaneously. It's an age-old physics fable that says a bullet dropped and a bullet fired simultaneously from the same height will hit the ground at the same time. But it's so darn difficult to test that no one's tried until now. So what's the plan? Well, I've been thinking about this one for so long. While I have seen this experiment elucidated in textbooks the world over, I don't think that anyone anywhere has ever tried it full size, full scale, with real bullets coming out of real guns. That's what we should do. It sounds like it can be kind of tricky, actually. I think we should do some shop experiments before we start using any live rounds. Fair enough. Let's start. So before going ballistic with the ballistics, Adam comes up with a more simple way to put that textbook theory to the test. Well, this test is going to be comprised of two separate parts, and I am using a bullet of sorts. You may recognize the steel ball bearing as some of our ammunition from steam machine gun. Part the first. I'll be dropping this ball bearing from exactly table height, handily marked by this green line right here. I'll be filming its drop on a high-speed camera and counting how long it takes to get to the ground. Part the second. I'll be shooting this ball bearing from my little pinball shooter here, which I've marked out to be really accurate every time I shoot it. And I'm going to fire it across the same branch and measure how long it takes to reach the floor on the same high-speed camera. If this myth is true, those two times should be identical. Okay, here we go. This is the drop from table height. In three, two, one. Pretty simple. Couldn't be simpler, but there's a lot more to this test than meets the eye. Counting the frames of the high-speed shot tomorrow took exactly 201 frames to get from my hands to the ground. And because we're filming at 500 frames per second, each frame is 2 milliseconds, which means that the total travel was 402 milliseconds. Or for those of you who love fractions, and come on, who doesn't? 4.02 tenths of a second. So 402 is the benchmark. Now, how will the fireball stack up? High speed ready? Time for some pinball wizardry. Here we go. Pinball shooter. In three, two, one. And the results are flipping fabulous. What do you got? Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, when I drop the ball from table height, it takes 402 milliseconds to reach the ground. When I shoot it from this pinball shooter, 410 milliseconds to reach the ground. Eight tenths of 1% difference. That's pretty much identical. With less than 1% difference, that's a pretty powerful result. And a provisional thumbs up for the minute. But Jamie's not impressed. Okay, but I thought this story was about guns. <laughs> you really want to get the shooting guns? Well, yeah. If you'd like to see Mythbusters carry out the rest of the bullet experiment, uh, please watch the end of the video as is attached on my class webpage. I would greatly encourage you to do that. But clearly what we see from their first set of experiments in their demonstration is that a uh, ball bearing dropped and fired horizontally from the same height does hit the ground at the same time. 
Um, what we're going to take a look here and do a quick drawing to be included in your notes here. We'll start with a ball that is at some height above a floor and we'll fire that ball horizontally with a known initial velocity. What we end up doing in projectile motion is we end up revisiting a lot of the motion equations that we used at the beginning of the year. Um, it's a really nice way to start the review process. But because we have two separate motions going on at the same time, we have an object that is moving downward or upward, in this case downward, and also sideways at the same time, we end up distinguishing those directions um, with other subscript variables. So because this ball is fired horizontally, what we do is we add a subscript x to that initial velocity, indicating that the velocity is all in the x direction or in the horizontal direction um, at once initially there. This distance above the ground, <clears throat> uh, we would normally label D because it's a vertical distance in projectile motion, we add a subscript Y. So that dy value is our height. You may also often in textbooks see this is labeled as little h as well for height. Well, what happens, of course, in this case is that the projectile travels a parabolic path out and down at the same time until it strikes the floor or the ground. The distance that it travels horizontally we would call dx. And you will often hear this called range. So if you ever heard it, hear the term the range of projectile, that's the variable they're referring to. We are now going to go to uh, a picture that may look familiar to many of you. Um, this is a picture from Andrew uh, Professor Andrew David Hazy's um, presentation, Evening with a Scientist, earlier this year. And this is the ping pong ball that he caught uh, pictures of with his uh, strobe light. Really neat picture for us to study in projectile motion. If we take a look at <clears throat> the different motions that are going on here, well, you're going to use green horizontal lines to show how the ball is moving vertically. So I'm going to put a green horizontal line in the middle of each ping pong ball on its way down here. The next image in the photograph here, the ball is actually on its way back up. It has struck the table there and is on its way back up. But what you end up seeing here is that the distance traveled vertically between each of these green lines is getting larger and larger and larger. What does that indicate about the motion of the ball vertically? Well, as you may remember from our, our study of motion, what that indicates is that the object must be accelerating. And of course it is, it's accelerating due to gravity. If we take now and t uh, take a look at the motion of the ball horizontally, sideways, by taking various lines and putting them on the ping pong ball, which we'll do in red, you can see, we'll do one more over here when it was on its way up, that for the most part we have a horizontal distance in each successive equal time frame here that is remaining constant. These values, the distance between these red lines is pretty much the same. Well what does that indicate about our ping pong ball moving sideways? Well, it indicates that it is moving at constant velocity. 
These are the main two key points in the study of projectile motion, that we have two motions that are going on independently. One motion has nothing to do with the other. But what they do share in common, of course, is that they're taking place in the same amount of time. So now let's break down these motions <clears throat> into two separate uh, analysis here. We'll take the horizontal motion which is under conditions of constant velocity as shown in our diagram above. And let's look at what equations we would use to analyze that motion. Well, that equation, the only one that we have in our pocket that doesn't have an A in it is V equals D over T. Well, to make it projectile motion specific, since it's horizontal, we would say Vx equals dx over t. Time doesn't have direction. And so, what we end up seeing here is that the initial velocity horizontally remains constant, which is equal to dx, the range of the projectile, divided by time. And so what, does this, what is this motion responsible for? This motion is responsible for the range of the projectile. Okay? Now if we take a look at the vertical motion of the projectile, what are its conditions of motion? Well, it moves a constant acceleration due to gravity. So what would be the equations to analyze its motion? Well, we go to our reference table of equations available, and we see here that the only equation that has the distance it travels, the initial velocity, time, and the fact that it accelerates is d equals vit plus one half a t squared. To make that projectile motion specific, we're going to tweak this a little bit. We'll add a subscript y for its vertical distance. This horizontal projectile doesn't start out with any initial vertical velocity, it's the same as if the ball was dropped. So the VI value here is 0 plus 1 half, and our A becomes a G, T squared. So putting that all together, DY equals 1 half G, T squared. What is, uh, what factors of the motion is the vertical motion responsible for? Well, the vertical motion controls the time in the air, the shorter the distance of fall, the less time in the air, the greater the distance of fall, the more time in the air. And of course, this motion also controls the vertical height attained by the projectile. It looks like this will do it for um, our discussion of a projectile fired horizontally. Watch the next video um, for the projectile fired at an angle.